Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight, what I'm hoping to do is to let you know whether you may or may not want to pick up the game Dolce from Stronghold Games. I've got a shiny new copy of the game here, still in shrink wrap. I've obviously not played this game. I've obviously not opened it up. I don't even really know that much how much of what you get inside this box other than the press release that um, Stronghold sent me. So I got to kind of see what the contents were before I agreed to review it. So fair warning, this is a review copy that Stronghold sent us. No other compensation was sent or provided. So this will be my first time cracking open this box. And I invite you to join me as we play or take a look at this bingo style game where one person's going to get a thing and everyone then is going to use the same thing to try to build a confectionery empire from what i understand uh, it says competition is fierce in the world of sweets plant your field strategically and use every last resource to make the best confections around i'm not going to go into the full details but i will mention this is a one to four player game that can be played solo Ages 14 plus, which I honestly think is a little silly and probably something to do with the component size more than the difficulty of the game, and plays in about 30 minutes, so a nice quick one. I think this game looks fascinating. I love the theme. I am really looking forward to checking it out, but step one is going to be opening the box. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the shrink wrap so you can stop seeing my camera and the reflection, and we can actually look at what's inside here. Dolce Unleashed. Just a quick look at the different sides of the box. Here we have the back. And the various edges. Not a lot to see there. Fair enough. Oh, see this side. Some more words sharing. So right on the top, we have the player boards. Interestingly, the uh, instructions underneath. I haven't seen a game in quite a while where you open it up and the instructions aren't on top. So we have the player boards in four different player colors. I note right away they use the very standard red, green, yellow, blue. Uh, which immediately makes me worry that this may have some colorblindness accessibility issues. I don't personally know. I don't have that problem myself, but it is something you may want to look into if that is something that affects you or the people you game with. Uh, these are single-sided boards. And pretty simple. Uh, what's really hard to see on the camera, and almost as hard to see in real life, is that there is a grid on here. It's a 4x4 four four grid that is on each of these and you will be placing tiles on top of this these boards uh they are symmetrical there is no difference between them other than the border color um even the artwork is repeated then we move over to the rule book this feels nice and short competition is fierce in the world of sweets we already basically said this so the interesting thing here is each round players draw a card and decide simultaneously to either build a cafe plant fields harvest crops Players all draw the same card. So what you do with your card is paramount to your success. And I generally enjoy the style of games where everyone has the same input. And I'm always fascinated by the end of the game what the different outputs look like. So it usually ends up and no one's boards are the same. So we're going to overview the components. But we're going to take a look at those. The instructions look clear. Lots of white space, which I like. It looks like there's some good examples of, um, from, of actual game components. Um, Feed the chickens. There's chickens. Interesting. That's going to sell the game for someone. Right there. Uh, plenty of examples. This looks solid. Scoring phase. Example. Game end. Uh, we are looking at a nice seven pages. Very reasonable. And then solo rules where it looks like there's an actual ranking based on your score. So you're not necessarily just trying to beat your high score. You're getting a rank. Then we have a lot of air. Wow. This game has a lot of air. This could be in a much smaller box. Yeah, there's nothing under this trough insert. I'm a little confused that the game wasn't the size of these boards, at least. I understand with these boards. But if you had folded these in half, you could have had half the size. Now, I do realize part of game design is making it so people notice your box on the shelf. So I fully understand why companies do it. But this is a lot of error in one box. Then we have the cards. There are a ton of them. Micro Meeple, I gotta say. Uh, some cubes. As I just said, Micro Meeple. Like, they're, they're really tiny. And chickens. Some bonus baggies. Always appreciate that. Thank you, Stronghold, for including baggies. And some large, almost tarot-sized cards that look like rule summaries. And we're going to take a look at each of these in turn. Alright, this is in a resealable. So yeah, summary card for every player. 
with the different actions and the different rounds. Appreciate it. Always like having summaries. Rule summaries rock. I like not having to rely on a third party to provide me with something like that. So we're going to toss that up in this corner. We'll move to the meeples. That are very meeple-shaped meeples. They look like meeples. There is a silica pack here, which most of us can toss out. But if you do live somewhere very humid, you might want to keep it with your game. So we have a chicken and a very tiny meeple in each of the player colors. See, so chicken and meeple. Can you see those? Yeah, chicken and meeple in the four different player colors. Odd that they're tiny. Like, I almost, I, I almost wonder why they didn't just give us a full-size meeple. Because meeple aren't huge. Tiny little meeple. How much food your chicken has and how many points you've earned. Then we have resource cubes. Uh, these are not wood, which is surprising. They are plastic. I'm so used to seeing wooden bits. So we have five different colors. These look much more colorblind friendly. Though I, again, do not have that problem myself. So yeah, little plastic cubes. I'm just going to pull this one out so you can see it. And kind of judge the size there. Um, in five colors. I don't think there's a reason for me to pull out each of these. So you've got a, a reddish brown. A cream a kind of caramelly yellow, a gray, and a white. And there are way less white. So I don't know if there's a, a economy here for, perhaps there's an economy for value. I also have the bags that things came in, which you can also use to store some of these components. I am probably going to try to toss these in here, or I'll just use one of the baggies. So next we get to the, the, the actual the meat of the game, which is these cards which you can already see kind of from the edge, that you're basically going to have four sets, one for each player color. First, we got to get the shrink wrap off this. Bam, there we go. So I am just going to sort these by the colors. And you can already see the artwork and everything is identical on them. I'm going to pick greens to kind of show off. So you have the various buildings. So you have chocolate clusters, restaurant, ingredients it needs, card number and then on the back though you have the choice on every turn to either build the building or plant uh make it a field like where you can harvest these resources and that's what it is for every card so you then have flan i think that says flan cookies okay so these are all different places that different bakeries obviously right so flan cookies Vanilla lattes, brownies, peanut butter bars. Okay, I shouldn't have done this this late at night after dinner because now I'm hungry. Donuts, double chocolate mochas. Oh, man. Eclairs and so on. Tiramisu, toffee, peanut butter, peanut brittle, fudge. So all the arts are very similar, but there's little changes, mainly in color. Not a lot to differentiate them, to be honest. And just to show, this should be identical, right? So we have the same things. Yeah, we have the flan second, then the cookies, then the vanilla lattes, and so on. Everyone's deck's the same. And that's because it's one of those games where the lead player is going to pick a card to play. Then everyone else has to then find their card to the same card in their deck and decide what to do with it. And that's it. That's what you get. I'm going to... So you got four decks of cards. We'll spread them out here so we can see everything at once. Five resources. Some player pieces. Instructions. And the player boards. That's it for the whole game. Everything you get there. I don't have a good place to put these. Here, I'll put them on top of the box. Box with a trough style insert. Some baggies to put stuff in. Which I'm going to steal one of to put these cards in. And that's it. So we're just going to quickly clean this up. Ta-da. Toss the lid back on. And we are good to go. Alright, there you have it. What you get in a shiny new copy of Dolce from Stronghold Games. A game that has already made me hungry for sweet treats. And I'm going to have to try to find a way tomorrow sometime at lunch to go somewhere, some type of cafe to get something like this. Uh, some kind of mocha latte maybe with a croissant or something. I don't know if there was a croissant building. Um, pretty simple components. A uh, bunch sets of cards for each of the players that are identical. Some resource cubes, a player board, and then two tracking tokens for every player. You know what? Games don't need a lot of bits to be good. 
So what I'm looking forward to is getting this game to the table and finding out just how well Dolce plays. Now, when I do that, I will be sharing my thoughts on social media, of course, because that's what everyone does nowadays. You'll be able to find me any social media site pretty much everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. In particular, I'm, expre- I'm more active on, say, Facebook, uh, Twitter for now, and Instagram. Instagram, I'll be sharing lots of pictures eventually. Um, other than that, we're eventually going to do up a formal review of this game once we've uh, kind of put it through its paces and I've tried it with a couple different gaming groups. You'll be able to find that review at tabletopbellhop.com as well as a video version on YouTube at youtube.com slash tabletopbellhop. As well, we'll be talking about it on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can subscribe to on your podcatcher of choice. <sighs> it's very late at night and I really don't need a coffee, but man, do I want one now. I'm going to have to let you go. Good day and game on.